So choosing a Celtic harp, part four, sound. So sound, of course, is in the ear of the beholder. We're looking for something that we like, right? I'm going to offer you a couple, uh, a couple of words, a couple of sort of opposites when we think about sound and uh, opposite spectrums, right? On the one hand, we have bright and on the other hand, we have dark or, or maybe rich. So, and both of them both have a good aspect or uh, a bad aspect. In other words, when, when something sounds bright and it's good, it, we might describe it as bright or bell-like, right? Or, or uh, crystal clear, um, it, you know, it's, it's got a ringing, bright, beautiful sound. Um, and when something's rich or dark, maybe we think more it's that uh, rich, like rich, I think is a, is a great adjective, um, just that we're swimming in sound, right? Ah, oh, beautiful. Um, and so those are kind of two opposites. You might prefer one, you might prefer the other. For me, I tend to prefer rich rather than bright, but obviously a good harp or a good instrument will sound good regardless of which spectrum it tends towards. Just that's something to be kind of aware of both as listening. Is this a bright sound or is this a rich sound? And which do I prefer, right? Which do I prefer? Now, as I say, both of them also have sort of the, the, the that's when they're, when that is good. When it's bad and it's bright, we might instead think that it's tinny, right? Or it's it's thin sounding uh, and, uh, that, um, so now, it, or, 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 or pingy, right? That, that it just, it's, it's, we hear a sharp attack, but it's, it's not a nice attack. It's not a nice sound, right? Um, and on the, then on the flip side of, of rich um, or dark, it might be um, muddy or indistinct, right? We're, we're, we're just, uh, we can't even hear the attack, right? That, and that, um, or thunky or whatever. So, um, so listening for that too. Um, uh, just some words to kind of describe what we might be hearing and what we might like or might not like. Obviously, we also want to uh, feel as if there's enough sound, right? That, it, that, that, that it's uh, loud enough and rich enough or loud enough and, and you know, the, the, we're able to create sound on it. Now, it can be very helpful if you're actually able to play on the harps you're thinking about to have somebody else along, you know, maybe your teacher or another harpist who can also play on them and maybe listen to them without knowing which harp is being played and get a sense of what sounds you like. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So, um, if you can't listen to the harp, it's much harder you, you know, some companies have sound clips. Um, you can obviously listen to stuff on YouTube, but it's not the same as being there in, in person. And I mean, I, it's potentially better than nothing, but I, 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 yeah, I, I'm not convinced that that's always that helpful. Um, also, of course, different people can create different sounds out of the same harp, right? That's always kind of interesting. Um, but anyway, Using those adjectives perhaps is a way to think about um, what sound you like and does this harp uh, produce that sound. Um, and one of the factors, of course, that will affect that is what strings it has. So let's go on to that.